It's an absolute nightmare to people getting killed. In an almost unbelievable wave of panicky selling, the Dow Jones Industrial Average today plunged. A record more than 500 points down in by far the busiest session in Wall Street history. That was going on at home on a day when U.S. warships retaliated against Iran in the Persian Gulf. The uh, Iranian platform at uh, Rashidat, also it's called Rostan, was uh, destroyed this morning by a United States naval gunfire. No, we're not going to have a war with Iran. They're not that stupid. Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. The extraordinary, if restrained, action taken in the Persian Gulf early this morning was overshadowed through the day by scenes such as Wall Street has never witnessed, as the Dow Jones Industrials took off on a fear-fed freefall to close down a record 508.32 points. Panic traders worked through lunch hours in a desperate but losing attempt to keep up with tickers that rolled up an all-time high volume. CBS News business correspondent Ray Brady looks at this devastating day for the market. They're calling it the Monday Massacre, the worst drop in Wall Street history. I just came from inside and it looks like a madhouse. It's so crazy, you can't, nobody even expected it to be down this much. Hour after hour today, wave after wave of selling hit the stock market. A selling panic, the professionals call it. By the closing bell, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was in the steepest fall in its 103-year history, down more than 500 points. The volume of trading was way beyond anything ever seen before. Well, if you had any kind of objectivity, even if you lost tens of thousands of dollars, you know, you could find something, you know, it's fascinating. The way sometimes a bloodbath is fascinating. In San Francisco and Los Angeles, the stock exchanges closed early, unable to handle the flood of sell orders. And in New York, the high-speed ticker tape fell two hours behind. On Black Monday, October 28, 1929, the market dropped 12.8 percent. Today's loss was far greater, more than 22 percent. Estimates are investors lost more than $500 billion today. Computers kicked off some selling programs. Also, those stock prices had reached dizzying heights. We've had a great deal of over-speculation. You've had 29-year-olds making a million dollars a year, expecting to make a million and a half next year, and two million the year after that. President Reagan said late today, the economy is sound. All the business indices are up. There is nothing wrong with the economy. But many Wall Streeters say the big sell-off in stocks was the result of the administration's economic policies, the weak dollar, rising interest rates and those two deficits in trade and government spending plus nervousness over the Persian Gulf. On one market, prices rose. Gold was up $10 an ounce. Bad news for other financial markets. Uh, the price of gold is like uh, the price on a thermometer. You can equate the temperature of the world by looking at gold prices. And of course, as the uh, economic temperature of the world heightens, so does the price of gold. Wall Streeters interviewed tonight were mostly gloomy, many of them saying they feel the big sell-off hasn't run its course yet. Dan? Right, the question everybody wants to know the answer to, is this 1929 all over again? Well, Dan, there's no question that the market today dropped on a percentage basis greater than it did on that terrible day in 1929, so you've got that. On the other hand, we've got a much stronger economy today, and we can only hope that a lot of the regulations that were put in in Wall Street after 1929 will now come to our rescue. Ray, thanks. The fear in Bedlam on Wall Street spread like a kind of fiscal flu to stock exchanges around the world. CBS News chief European correspondent Tom Fenton has been tracking the big chill. If we ever needed proof that stock markets around the world are linked in what could be called a global market, we have it now. It was like a chain reaction that swept through the time zones. The storm of selling began this morning in Asia, where the Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Sydney, Australia stock markets all had record or near record losses. The storm gathered momentum as it moved west. European national markets lost between 6 and 15 percent of their value. The Frankfurt market had to extend its hours to cope with what one West German dealer called Black Monday. In London, despite a last minute rally, the market fell more than 10 percent. One broker said traders panic because many are so young they have never seen a bear market. 
Analysts gave a number of technical reasons for the sell-off, but basically, almost everybody here blames the Americans. It's the old adage, when the states coughs, the rest of the world catches a cold. Or... We have to go to the problems of the imbalances in the U.S. economy, which we've all worried about on and off for years. Suddenly, it seems as if patience has expired. Prime Minister Thatcher, on a visit to the U.S., had a word of encouragement. The underlying economies are strong, and the growth prospects are good, and it is that which matters. The cycle will begin again shortly, Dan, when the Tokyo stock market opens. Japan has one of the world's strongest economies. If Tokyo continues to fall, then Black Monday could well be followed by Black Tuesday. Our chief European correspondent, Tom Fenton. The ticker on the New York Stock Exchange fell so far behind the frantic pace of today's trading that there won't be a final, final figure until tomorrow morning about just how far down it went. But to give you an idea of the kind of day it was, just a few examples. General Motors down 14, DuPont down 18, Procter & Gamble down almost 23, and IBM down 31 plus. Wall Street professionals said that what happened on the stock market today, quote, pushed reason to the background. But what about the reaction among millions of stockholders across the country? CBS News national correspondent Bernard Goldberg was out among them. On Wall Street, they have technical names for what happened today. On Main Street, the explanations, if less precise, seem just as valid. This whole market is a crapshoot. It's just like shooting, uh, shooting dice, you know. This isn't investing, it's high-class gambling. How bad was it for the small investor, for the typical American, with some money in the market, a broker in South Florida? They sold everything in sight. I and mean, they panicked this morning. They were walking in with stocks, uh, certificates, just wanted to sell them, get whatever they can out of them. Mark's down 189 points. It's down 193 now, volume 333 million. Why are you here watching this? Because I'm watching the slaughter of Monday in 1987. And what about a ripple effect? The crash of 29 took the other markets with it after all. A real estate agent late today in Los Angeles. We're already starting to receive calls from astute buyers saying, are there any bargains out there because perhaps someone has a great need to sell because they've taken a beating in the stock market. So we expect to see a lot of activity. It's called capitalizing on fear, and the worse things got on Wall Street today, the better some people liked it. One investor's crash is another's buying opportunity. I don't believe in selling into panic. In fact, I'm buying today. I think uh, it's a good time to buy. I think it's an excellent time to buy. With the bulls on the run and the bear showing their teeth, one broker had the perfect epitaph for today's market. Yeah, we got a zoo. Bernard Goldberg, CBS News, Miami. And as the CBS Evening News continues, full coverage of today's attack on Iranian oil platforms in the Gulf, plus an analyst's view of what the stock market nosedive means to you. Tonight at 11.30, 10.30 Central Time, CBS News will broadcast a special report on both these major stories. And I'll be back in a moment. Splish, splash, I was taking a bath. Long about a Saturday night. Gloved up, got a clog in my tub. So I jumped down and fixed it upright. Just poured a liquid Drano, soon the clog was all gone. If they call a liquid Drano, baby, no, it's real strong. It won't hurt your pie. Metal pipe or plastic liquid Drano, just fantastic. Now I'm splishing and I'm splashing. Liquid Drano, the liquid strong enough to be called Drano. Today you need an insurance company that's sure-footed. A company that looks out for you year after year. A company with experience. You need the Hartford. When you need us most, we're at our best. That's the Hartford difference. Folks, it's official. The big mouth is now the fresh mouth. Thanks to new super strength Polident. Now with a minty mouthwash ingredient, so it freshens up dentures as it cleans them. Try new Polident Green for a mouth freshening clean. Ah. Engineering the experimental Oldsmobile Aerotech gave us experience with a revolutionary new engine. It's a special turbocharged version of GM's new 16-valve quad four. It's going to change the way engines are designed. All over the world. Oldsmobile quality from the engineers at Oldsmobile. 
Drive the Quad Four. Available now in the new Cutlass Calais. In today's small Persian Gulf attack by the U.S. Navy, the Navy destroyed two Iranian oil platforms and disarmed another. President Reagan called it a, quote, prudent and restrained reaction to last week's missile attack on a U.S. flagged Kuwaiti tanker. Defense Secretary Weinberger said the U.S. considers the matter closed, but Iran said it opens up a full-scale war, and one Iranian leader promised a crushing blow in response. Pentagon correspondent David Martin begins our coverage. This was the target, Iranian oil platforms which the Pentagon says were used by the Iranians to launch small boat attacks against Persian Gulf shipping. Shortly before 7 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, the U.S. warned the workers aboard to abandon the platforms. Then, for nearly half an hour, four U.S. Navy destroyers shelled the platforms with their 5-inch guns, firing more than 1,000 rounds. When the shelling was over, a Navy demolition team used explosives to finish the job, eliminating a threat to the convoys of American flagships. It's very close to the convoy route. They've uh, mounted small boat, at, small boat attacks on uh, convoys, and uh, they have also fired on our helicopter from that uh, uh, particular uh, uh, platform. U.S. forces also seized another oil platform about five miles away. Navy SEALs destroyed the weapons and communications equipment they found. The attacks drew a predictable outburst from the Iranians. I think it's a full-fledged de facto war against my country, and as I said, we feel uh, uh, entitled to take the necessary actions at the appropriate time and accordingly, and we will do that definitely. We think that there's a great uh, chance of terrorism uh, being conducted by the Iranians against American interest in Europe or even here in the United States. Today's action was in retaliation for Friday's silkworm missile attack on the American flag tanker Sea Isle City. Sources told CBS News that Admiral William Crow, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, recommended a much stronger retaliation, sinking an Iranian ship. Instead, the president chose a response that posed a minimum risk to both Iranian and American lives. But a diplomatic message warned that the next time, the U.S. would not be so restrained. Admiral Crow thinks there will be a next time. Uh, I would never pretend that this in itself will deter further uh, Iranian responses. When the U.S. began escorting Kuwaiti oil tankers, administration officials were confident Iran would not challenge the U.S. directly. Now those same officials say Iran and the U.S. appear to be on a collision course. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. U.S. Navy warships were placed in strategic positions in the southern Gulf. The U.S. Navy frigate Flatley was on sentry duty, watching over the American flag tankers Bridgeton and Middleton. The frigate Rents was lurking off the Abu Musa oil field, where the production platforms kept right on working. The Abu Musa field, like the one attacked today, is believed to be a base for Revolutionary Guards, it looked untroubled from 12 miles away as a Japanese tanker loaded up. An Iranian warship was also on hand, watching but not speaking. Experts think the Iranians might stay that way for a while. They are again limited to what they've been doing for about the last six to eight months, using their gunboats, which are very lightly armed, and it's doubtful whether they're going to be able to do anything serious damage against American warships. But in Tehran today, the mood was anything but subdued. Revolutionary guards and others whipped themselves into an anti-American frenzy at the funeral of two of their members killed in an American helicopter attack two weeks ago. There were suggestions today that some Arab oil producers were a bit disappointed by the limited American retaliation. Their problem is that they want Iran wrapped hard, but at the same time, they also want their own oil safe on the sea. And if Iran chooses to strike back, that oil won't be. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, in the Gulf. Iran says this means war with the United States. President Reagan says, quote, they're not that stupid. Bill Plant reports on the threats and taunts. Late this afternoon, President Reagan defended the attack as a strong but carefully limited answer to Iranian provocation. We thought that it was an appropriate and proportionate response to their missile attack on a freighter which wounded some of our people. No, we're not going to have a war with Iran. They're not that stupid. And other members of the administration towed the line that the attack was not an escalation, but a message to Tehran. He acted responsibly, prudently, forcefully, and uh, let's hope that uh, Khomeini, uh, irrational though he may be on some things, will get the message. The government of Iran should be under no illusion about our determination and ability to protect our ships and our interest against unprovoked attacks. 
The president's decision to hit the oil platforms was made just after a Saturday afternoon strategy session with his chief of staff, secretary of defense, national security advisor, and chairman of the joint chiefs of staff. Sources tell CBS News the president and his advisors first favored hitting Iran's silkworm missile launchers, but finally chose the oil platform because they believed it had longer-term military significance and could be attacked without loss of life. Mr. Reagan went out of his way to consult with congressional leaders, bringing them in last night for a rare late evening meeting at his White House family quarters. And today, the action won broad congressional support. Option. I think it was a measured response, a correct response. I think the Ayatollah asked for it, and he got it. It clearly gives the message to Iran that they are indeed extremely vulnerable, and they are. Still, there was criticism that the White House openly defies sections of the War Powers Act, giving Congress veto power over military action. Even an American president does not have the right under our Constitution to pick and choose what laws he or she will or will not abide by. No one here thinks today's actions will really deter the Iranians from their attacks on the U.S. presence in the Gulf. The administration wants to establish that those attacks will not go unanswered, but at the same time, it seems reluctant to make too much of them. Bill Plant, CBS News, the White House. A judge in New York today sentenced Bernhard Goetz to six months in jail and five years on probation. That was for carrying the unlicensed gun Goetz used to shoot four young black men on a subway almost three years ago. The 39-year-old Goetz also was ordered to undergo psychiatric counseling and to spend 280 hours in community service. Getz said he feared the youths were going to rob him on the subway. A jury cleared him last June of attempted murder and assault charges. The U.S. Supreme Court today upheld a ruling that the Reagan administration may not deny visas to foreigners invited to speak in the United States, even if they are communists or belong to anti-American groups. The ruling came on a three-to-three -three tie, two justices not voting and one Supreme Court seat still empty. Sometimes it seems like every time you look around, your rug is dirty, especially in those places where people walk the most. Well, try new Woolite Spot and Stain Rug Cleaner. It not only cleans up heavy traffic areas, but because it contains the ingredient fiber pill, your rug stays cleaner longer than with the other liquid spray. So when you look up, all you'll see is a beautiful rug. Trust new Woolite Spot and Stain Rug Cleaner for heavy traffic areas. It keeps your rug cleaner longer. It's your new telephone from AT&T. It's cordless, has two channels for clarity, and knows you have more to do than just talk on the phone. No, you're not keeping me from anything. And you found it at Kmart. Here's Kmart, America's favorite store. We love visiting America. Hot chili. Barbecued ribs. Corn frittas. But it's jolly good you have K.O. Pectate. Nothing relieves diarrhea and calms cramps faster than K.O. Pectate tablet formula. K.O. Pectate. The diarrhea specialist. If you get painful headaches, you should know that recently, people like you, nationwide, took part in the largest headache test ever. Extra Strength Tylenol against Ibuprofen. Conclusion? Extra Strength Tylenol is unbeatable for headache relief. Nothing is more effective. And something else. Tylenol doesn't irritate your stomach the way Ibuprofen can. If nothing is more effective for headaches, and Tylenol is gentler to your stomach, shouldn't your choice be Tylenol? The story that remains of major immediate concern today is what happened on Wall Street and what it means. This evening I talked with William Lefebvre, a market analyst, and I asked him if what we saw with the stock market today was real panic. An incredible plunge and it was panic, yes. What caused it? Well, I think it's a series of things that we've known about for years, but they just all came together these past few days or weeks. And that is the huge trade deficit, the huge federal deficit, the huge national debt. Nothing seems to be being, being done about it. And as a result, something happened here. All of a sudden, it all galvanized and we had selling, the likes of which none of us have ever seen before. For the rank and file person who is securities job, doesn't have a lot of stock, should he be worried? 
Well, I, I think he should be worried to the extent that this could spread to other things. Now, for instance, uh, if a company were making plans now to expand, having seen what's happened in the last few days of Wall Street, they might change their mind on that. And where does it go from here? It can only go down three and a half more days like this. But in reality, I think you probably get some more selling tomorrow. If, on the other hand, the market opens up slightly and the volume is somewhat moderate, maybe it's going to, you know, the market will be, if you will, in, in the intensive care ward and looking better every moment. But until you see a moderation in both price changes and in volume, you really can't be sure you're out of the woods. Chances that there'd be a, an almost immediate bounce back. I think that's unlikely. I had hoped for one today. At one point, it was down a couple hundred points, rallied backwards, only off 100. But it didn't hold, and down she went and finished as, you know, off 500. So the absence of any real recovery today makes it unlikely that you get a turnaround tomorrow. If your neighbor knows very little about the stock market, leans over the back and says, listen, you're supposed to be an expert. What's the most important thing I should know about this? How do you answer it? Well, I think I'd say that uh, suddenly the people who were very greedy a couple months ago are suddenly very fearful. That's, there's only two emotions in Wall Street. One's fear and the other's greed. Usually we have an excess of one or the other. We have now, I think, an excess of fear. A strike that's lasted 17 weeks appeared to collapse today. A majority of some 2,800 NBC camera operators, video technicians, and editors voted to accept a network offer. That offer reportedly involves weaker job security and the planned layoff of some 200 workers at NBC. Two small units voted the contract down. It was not immediately clear if that would prevent other strikers from immediately returning to work. Japanese Prime Minister Nakasone stepped in today and broke a deadlock over who will succeed him. His choice is former finance minister, minister Noboru Takashiba, known as a cautious inside operator in the ruling party. Takishita promised to continue all Nakasone's major policies, including steps to cut the huge trade surplus with the United States. In Harrisburg, Pennsylvania today, a self-employed plasterer and a church secretary produced the only jackpot ticket in the richest ever lottery drawing in North America, $46 million. Donald Woomer Sr. and Linda Dustbutt received the first of 26 annual checks, an after-tax payment of more than $1,416,000. Officials said the couple used birth dates and randomly selected numbers to put together the winning combination. And here we go again, and again, and again, and etc. Billy Martin today was named manager of the New York Yankees for the fifth time. Martin succeeds Lou Pinella, who was named the Yankees general manager. Dad? Oh, Julie, look at your hay fever. Well, she hasn't had a sniffle all day. And they're ready to dance all night. Thanks to research by Dow subsidiary Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals, millions like Julie may now find relief from allergies without the drowsiness often associated with allergy treatments. You can make a difference in what tomorrow Julie, brings. Save me a dance. Cause Dow lets you do great things. A little exercise never hurts, and neither does eating right. Especially when it's sunsweet pitted prunes with yogurt. Rounder, plumper sunsweet. So good tasting and so good for you. What's the secret to pop secret microwave popcorn? Perfect popcorn popped under perfect conditions. Pop secret leaves very few unpopped kernels. Pop secret from Betty Crocker. It's the only way to pop. This is Brother Rice. He hasn't spoken a word in exactly 20 years. Now that's something to celebrate. But not a loud, boisterous celebration. More like this, the new FTD Celebrate Bouquet. Flowers, colorful bowl, and a fun box of surprises. So, when someone you know has done something worth celebrating, send the FTD Celebrate Bouquet. A fun, inexpensive celebration worth shouting about, right? The new FTD Celebrate Bouquet. A great way to celebrate anything. British cellist Jacqueline Dupre, whose career was cut short by multiple sclerosis, died today in London. Jacqueline Dupre was 42. The senior man in the U.S. Senate says count him out for re-election. Now 86 years old, Mississippi Democrat John Stennis said today he won't run again for the Senate seat he's held since 1947. President Reagan paid a bedside visit to First Lady Nancy Reagan in the hospital this evening. He took in an oversized get-well card and a little basket of cookies. 
Mrs. Reagan's recuperation from Saturday's breast cancer surgery at Bethesda Naval Hospital is described as ahead of schedule. Tonight, the White House released a photo of the Reagans taken yesterday in the hospital room. Outlook for Mrs. Reagan's full recovery, the doctors say, is excellent. And finally, a progress report on the little girl who commanded international concern last week when she was trapped for two and one half days in a Texas well. And the good word today is that doctors report progress in Jessica McClure's condition. Harry Smith has that good news. Once again, Jessica McClure knows the feeling of being safe in her mother's arms. But today, doctors performed a second operation on her damaged right foot. While there's still a danger they might not be able to save it, the surgeons say Jessica is doing fine. You gotta remember, children, babies, infants like uh, Jessica, uh, they have a great recuperative power. Friday night's rescue is still fresh in the minds of the people of Midland. Heroes like Robert O'Donnell, the man who freed Jessica from her underground trap, went back to work today, still dazed by the drama. And normality, I don't know how long it'll take for that to actually set in, maybe when the alarm goes off again. Uh, whether it be God's help or whatever, uh, just all over it was just... And if y'all stand by one, you gotta see what we have. 25 miles away, an oil field worker lies unconscious, barely breathing. Okay, hold your hand right there on my leg, okay? O'Donnell's job is saving lives, even if it's far from the national spotlight. Brett Schmidt's job is building bridges. Last week, he and the men he works with dug Jessica's tunnel to freedom. We don't consider ourselves heroes or nothing like that. Uh, we just doing something that had to be done. The oil bust has meant hard times in this part of the country, but the grit of a little girl touched even the toughest of the roughnecks and roustabouts. Well, uh, I don't like telling, but I almost cried. <laughs> For folks out here, Jessica is the hero. Jessica is a reason to be proud again. Harry Smith, CBS News, Midland, Texas. And that's tonight's CBS Evening News. Until our special broadcast on the major developments on Wall Street and in the Persian Gulf, tonight at 11.30, 10.30 Central Time, Dan Rather. See you later. x -Lax presents some gentle guarantees. The warmth of the new sun waking the sleep from your body. The cool freshness of the morning air. And now the peace of mind that comes from the x -Lax guarantee. Taken at bedtime, x -Lax is guaranteed to work gently, effectively, by 8 a.m. or your money back. So in this uncertain world, isn't it nice to know you can relax with the family friend? x -Lax, guaranteed to work by 8 a.m. Wood Finish by Minwax penetrates deep into wood, so it's easy to get beautiful results. Bring out wood's rich, warm glow with Wood Finish by Minwax. Minwax makes wood beautiful. Studies with people who had a heart attack or unstable angina show aspirin can help prevent a heart attack. Ask your doctor about diet, exercise, and an aspirin a day. This message from Bayer, the wonder drug that works wonders. Phil, you're overreacting. We've got 30 people out there. Okay, I made a crude remark about your breath. I apologize. There's no mouthwash. I looked. I bought something new. It's cool, crisp, like nothing you've ever tasted. Whoa. It's Scope. Taste it. Introducing Scope Peppermint. Yes, peppermint. Like original mint, it kills germs like medicine mouthwash, and your breath's icy clean. Whoa. Exactly, Phil. Whoa. Now the power of Scope comes in peppermint, too. behind Wall Street's wild gyrations. Correspondent Robert Krulwich reports on the stock market's frenzied activity tomorrow on the CBS Morning News. This is CBS. If you're looking for that rare brooch, bracelet, ring, necklace, or pin, don't miss our annual estate sale this week at Shears Jewelers. Right now, Chase Lincoln First has millions of dollars to lend, so call and apply for some. But hurry, we're so anxious to lend you the money you need, it's burning a hole in our, <laughs> you know.
Rochester, home of the world's greatest deals on pre-owned Highline luxury cars. West Henrietta Road at Jefferson. People have a lot of reasons for supporting Lou Morgan. Here are just a few of them. He works well with local officials. It doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Morin takes a nonpartisan approach to solving problems. Monroe County is a half billion dollar a year business. It's no place for on-the-job training. Morin has the experience, and he runs a cost-effective administration. He's a good man and deserves re-election. I like him. I trust him. It's as simple as that. Jeopardy! Weeknights at 7.30 on TV10.